what do I hate? This video just turned to like an hour long. <sighs> All right. Oh, it is scary. <laughs> what are you listening to music wise at the moment? Um, the plot in you, very good. Didn't realize they existed. Very diverse vocals, light, heavy, exciting, fun. Little Nas X, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. I like that. And then, uh, I don't know, I like, I like predominantly heavy music, normally with sort of, I don't know, I like to find bands that I feel like have some meaning behind their message or their lyrics, um, rather than just like, we're really angry. And then certain bits of hip hop and, and rap and things, and then weird stuff. Favorite parkour video and why is Blitz Dem 5, which was edited by Sasha. It's not on, it's on one of Sasha's old channels. Personally for me, it sums up a period of parkour that I think there was just this immense progression, like suddenly, like when I got into parkour, things were very, very basic. People were just doing like standing breeze and things like that. And, and then people like Kai Willis, Phil Doyle and Toby and that lot came along and big like cat pass speed steps and strides and, and all of this started like coming along. And for some reason that video, the, the atmosphere it creates, the, the vibe, the people who are in it and some of the shots, there's like one shot in particular of, of I've spoken about this before in other videos, but just the guys like striding across IMAX in, in kind of sync. And then Toby goes like, like that. And it's just, I don't know why, it's the coolest video, coolest parkour video in my opinion, or at least one of them. I'm gonna get slated for that now. What makes you different? Um, I'm the only Giles Campbell Longley in the entire world. And my theory with this, right, is that if you Google that name, no one else comes up, not with the double barrel surname, the Giles Campbell Longley. And anyone with that name is gonna have an internet connection because there's not someone in like a, a desert in Africa called Giles Campbell Longley, realistically. And I don't know, I think, I think if, if I was to go deeper, I think I'm quite transparent or I like to try and be quite transparent. I'm not very good at, I, I, I was gonna say, I don't hide my emotions. I definitely do to an extent, but I'm more likely to talk about them than some other people, I think. I'm, I'm, I very much believe that communication is like the key to getting through things. So I like to talk as you might have already realized. What do I hate? This video just turned to like an hour long. I hate, like actually hate when you try and use something like an inanimate object in it. Like the, the perfect example that happened the other day and threw me into like a rage. You take a spatula, you put it in your drawer with all your spatulas and spoons and things. You close the drawer, but something in there like catches and the drawer doesn't close and it bounces open a bit. So you open the drawer and you rustle around and you close the drawer and it bounces open again. And you're like, and you do the same thing and you close it and it bounces. And it's that, it's the three times, if there's an inanimate object and it doesn't do its job after the third time, even though it is probably my fault, I am livid. And I mean, I'm not like actually lashing out and smashing things. I don't have rage, but I want to, like I want to tear that drawer apart and just like throw everything on the floor. So that's, that's like one thing I definitely, definitely hate. Why am I getting all the dark ones? What do you regret and why? What don't I regret would be a shorter answer. I, I, I really struggle to not think about the stuff that I regret. Like it's the typical lie in bed and just cycle through things. And it's technically I should sort of forgive and all of that. But I mean, even outside of parkour, it's like, I wish I'd picked up an instrument such as playing the guitar at a young age. And I wish I'd properly pursued trying to be in a band because I love live music and I know it looks glamorous and it's obviously there's a lot more work and graft into it. But I think we've experienced that a lot ourselves with touring in vans and doing parkour. Like I want in another life, that's a dream lifestyle for me. This is like, I definitely regret that. I regret not 
taking my training, uh, like my training has really fallen off over the last decade. And I'm incredibly lucky that I've spent, like I've, I've remained within the community and I, I have this sort of presence and platform, I guess, without needing to rely on myself as an athlete. But I, I really regret the fact that I let that slip because now when I go out, I'm just constantly facing mental challenges that are so hard to overcome. Like I never push myself to my physical limits, very, very rarely, unless it's incredibly safe. And it's, it's always just like a tough mental battle. And then when I actually overcome it, the thing was so easy for me because of sort of my past skill level and also like physical limits that I just then, the satisfaction is rarely there. I just beat myself up because I'm like, you're an idiot. You should have done that like an hour ago. So I definitely regret that. What are your aspirations for your career in parkour? Um, I guess this is my career. I think to take everything that I'm currently doing and do it bigger. Like I'm so much less focused on, I guess per, like my personal goals are now, they feel more encompassing to a bigger picture. And within that, like I wanna build this out and I wanna employ more people and then I wanna see them thriving. And I, I wanna leave a legacy. That's not saying I'm going to die tomorrow, but like I, I'm happy with where I've got to in parkour, but I, I just want to, I want to continue what I'm doing. I want to push the sport. I want to be seen like, it sounds egotistical, I guess, but I want to be seen as one of those people in like 40 years time who really did make a difference. And I think sometimes I feel like weird because I'm not a really an athlete and the, the people who make the biggest impacts are often the people who are progressing the most, um, within like, no, actually doing parkour, but I just, yeah, I want to, I want to do what I'm doing, do it bigger, do it better and keep, keep growing and, and being fulfilled with it. Oh, my greatest achievement outside of parkour. I feel like it should be having a daughter, like having my first child, but then I'm cynical and I just go, well, I just had sex and then we've had a baby. I'm like, Ooh. but I mean that, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, I don't, like, I don't consider it an achievement. It's something that has happened in my life and I'm, it's, it's one of the best things that's ever happened and it's, it's a whole new chapter. Um, I don't know. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. So like most of what I have done for the last 20 years has been striving to do stuff within this space. So it's hard. Like passing my driving test was pretty cool, but that was when I was 17. Do I think I have balance in my life? I don't think you can ever attain perfect balance because there's always stuff kind of going on and shifting. And, and I mean, especially now that I've had Daisy, like my days and weeks are just so, so different to what they were months ago. But I, there are set things I now try and do every single day with whether it be kind of routine or exercise or just, trying to do stuff, something that day that makes me feel fulfilled, that I think keeps me, I, I try, because if I don't feel like I've done the things I wanted to that day or that week, I'd, I'd beat myself up a bit. So I know what I want to aim for and I, I really try, but I don't think I'll ever get it perfect. And I don't think anyone does, to be honest. Oh, what's your ideal day? It's really tough because I think there's no ideal day because it would be so easy to be like, oh, like I, I've done lots of traveling and been around the world and it'd be so easy to say like, oh, exploring Hong Kong with my mates. Like, yes, that's technically an ideal day, but also spending a day at home with Sarah and Daisy and Darwin, my dog, and just having like that style of day is also an ideal day. So the thing that I just need for myself is to feel fulfilled and accomplished with what I set out to do that day. So if I know that day coming up is gonna be a family day or a work day or something, like as long as I structure that and I feel like I've then accomplished something, I can kind of go to bed feeling satisfied because if I don't do that, that's when the brain starts getting fun. Last one. I hope it's good. What's the scariest thing you've ever done and why? Probably having a kid. I reckon, because it's like, you don't necessarily feel fear in one particular moment, but you spend 
sort of the best part of nine months with this complete unknown about what the future is going to hold and you have ideas of what it's going to hold and you you have things that you want but it's so unknown and then leading up to like the birth this this yeah it's it's literally like everything changes overnight and it's 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 mental it's so so mental and it's it's not like you have one moment where you're terrified and you're sweating and your heart's pounding and things like that but it just it's this weird uncertainty and i think that's where you typically feel fear is in things that you're uncertain of so it's like that just building and building and then obviously like lots of scary parkour stuff because i'm an elite athlete and i've done loads of massive things but that's just casual that's easy All right.